Hi everyone, welcome back into My Chamber TV with the heartbeat of the Tampa Bay community. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're actually featuring on My Chamber TV, we're featuring the Upper Tampa Bay Chamber of Commerce and we have some great guests in the show that we wanna really bring home to you right in the comforts and privacy of where you're sitting, whether it be a business or your home. You know, real estate, I don't even know what to say anymore about real estate, okay? Whether you've been in the business for any length of time or you're just starting out in the real estate world, yay for you, congratulations. We don't know what's gonna happen, but we're gonna hear what's happening right now from Ellen and Barbara Doringer with With It Properties of Florida. Yes. So you have so much to share. You could probably do your own show on <laughs> real estate, especially uh, as you started this when? last july right in the middle of a pandemic can you believe that and you know what this is not the first time i've heard this mm -hmm. there are businesses out there that are starting up right. they're thriving and striving and you certainly are two of them in the community mm -hmm. so you came from out of town you came here to florida was it because you saw a vision of uh, florida properties <laughs> no actually we've been in florida for over 20 years okay uh, i'm from pennsylvania ellen's from ohio but what we uh, did was we lived in davenport florida near disney world it's exit 55 off of I-4, and uh, we have family over here. We have a daughter and two granddaughters, and we got tired of the I-4 travel back and forth, so we thought, we're gonna move over to Tampa. Good. Well, we were here one week, and everything shut down. So we've been here exactly one year. Wow. Mm -hmm. How'd you feel about that? What was your thoughts? Like, really? <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden, we couldn't socialize. We couldn't you know, do anything with real estate. We couldn't uh, gather with groups. We couldn't uh, be anywhere we wanted to be. We didn't know anyone over here. So it was truly a, a fresh start for us yeah, with yeah. the business and <laughs> with living here. Well, I'll tell you, I, I give you a lot of credit for, for just not ever giving up, and that's the strength of us Americans, and we mm, want right. to just push forward and make things work, and, and that's what we're doing. And I, I'm just excited to interview you and find out, okay, so since then, since you opened up, mm -hmm. and we are opening up here in Florida, which yes. thankfully, Good thing. right? Mm -hmm. So how are things working out now? Things are picking up like with everyone else. Now, the problem is we've got a lot of business still over in Davenport mm -hmm. because that's where everybody knows us. We're trying to get known over here in the Tampa area. Okay. So uh, we're hoping that we can get maybe one more agent here in Tampa because Alan and I are the only two agents working right now in the Tampa area, but we do have uh, two other agents currently over in Davenport and two other agents that are getting their license as we speak that will be over there in that area. Excellent. So we plan to have a group of maybe seven at the most because mm -hmm. we want to stay a small company. Mm -hmm. why, do, why do you say that to, you want to stay a small company? Because it just gives you better customer service. I think, you know, when you're smaller, we've been with bigger companies, we've been with franchises. Um, when you're with a smaller company like ours, you return the calls, you return the messages, you have personal service. If you have a problem, you do have someone to hold your hand through the entire process. So it, I, I feel that uh, it's better to be with a smaller company. I agree with you. I mm -hmm. do. Been there, done it with the big corporations. It's like a mom and, and pop that. company, you and, know. And, you know, since we've been doing these chamber shows for, gosh, seven, eight years now, that's what I'm hearing from a lot of right. the business owners mm -hmm. is you want to give that personal touch to your clients Absolutely. because it makes a big difference. There's something that has really not gone out of style in spite of the digital age and the technology mm -hmm. that we're in that I'm learning every day. It changes every day. But the one thing that is still out there is people want that human they do. engagement with one another so that you can create a relationship. I'm personally tired of getting a menu. You know, every time I call somebody and I need help and you get a menu and then you get on hold and then you get transferred and then you still don't get anybody. So, you know, we're not that kind of company. You're going to get us and you're going to get your answers. That's a, that's so great. I love to hear that music mm -hmm. to my ears. So what made you call your company Whip It? Oh, that's a good question. I'll that let Alan. My idea. That's well, right. Well, of course it was. I knew that. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> um, one of our associates uh, has two whippet dogs. I knew it. It was mm -hmm. a dog thing. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. And right. Barbara is actually their godmother. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, it just seemed like the perfect name. Uh, everybody seems to, oh, everybody loves dogs, or most everybody does. And we found that uh, a lot of people really react positively 
to that name. Mm -hmm. Smart thinking. We wanted to be different. We wanted to stand out. We wanted to have a different kind of logo. Our logo has a house, a palm tree, and a whippet dog. I love it. So, I, I kind of have a Actually, it's on the brochure. It's, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, I was just complimenting on this yeah. brochure just before we started the show. It's really, really nice. I, I love what you've done. If you just made it real kind of homey, mm -hmm. and you're very approachable having something like this as opposed to, I'm not saying anything against big corporate America, after all. But they don't I, do brochures. I think <laughs> <laughs> the big companies don't I'll, do it. I'll let you say that. <laughs> <laughs> but this is really nice because it gives you a feel for these people if you do pick up a, a brochure. And I'll tell you, as much as this digital age is what it mm -hmm. is, I like to have a brochure. I want it on my person, in my hand, right. it's tangible and I and it's there for me. And it's better than just handing a business card. Exactly, which yes. gets lost. Right. So let's talk about real estate. I know we don't have enough time, <laughs> but if you're not in the real estate world or homeowners insurance mm. or anything like that, you may not know what's happening here in Florida. I don't know where we're going to put people. It's crazy. I don't know where we're going to get all these listings. How is this affecting you? I mean, I hear I, I mm -hmm. hear new statistics almost every day. Well, part of the problem is every time we get a listing uh, within one, two days, mm -hmm. it's pending. Yeah. And there's multiple offers. So you get into bidding wars. Bidding wars, yes. And uh, it, it's been very challenging because yeah. we try to keep our listings on our website. And as soon as they're on there, now they're not there anymore I know. <laughs> because they're pending. So I'm finding with us as well as uh, our colleagues out there, it's really difficult to get a listing right now. Mm -hmm. because there's just not that much inventory available. I mean, is it, I just heard yesterday from my partner that the investors are coming in mm -hmm. and buying, buying 20,000 over yes. the, the price of these homes. They are. So mm -hmm. what are you finding out there in the market? Is it, is, are we back to door knocking, basically? Door knocking, well, <laughs> I, I kind of do the marketing for our company and, mm -hmm. and I've sent out postcards to all <coughs> of the communities around where our office is mm -hmm. uh, to try to generate new business. Uh, I guess that's kind of like door knocking. Mm -hmm. um, so far, we haven't had a lot of re results from that, but we're hopeful. Sure. But uh, I'm reading a lot about how we need to go back to the basics, which is sending out postcards and, you know, doing the cold calls and the things that we used to do when we were back in real estate 20, 25 years ago. Sure. Um, Handwritten notes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I think that's sending out little recipes and right. different things. We send like out that. calendars every year that have recipes on them. It goes on the refrigerator, yeah. the old-fashioned yes. way of doing yes. things. Mm -hmm. right. Exactly. I know, mm -hmm. I know. But it's like right there, and it's a constant reminder right in your face and, and that type of thing. Yeah. Right. Um, so whereabouts, are you the whole Tampa Bay area? I mean, where are you focusing on a, a centralized location? You had mentioned you wanted to remain a, a, a small office so mm -hmm. that you can actually service people better. Right. I think that's awesome. So wh whereabouts are you over here now? Well, we're located um, near online ball, uh, near the Veterans Expressway. So Oh, they, fabulous. Yeah, West Chase, Citrus okay. Park, okay. Uh, that area. We actually uh, advertise that we service the Orlando and Tampa areas. Now in Tampa, we're concentrating on North Tampa, which would include Oldsmar, West Chase, Citrus Park. Um, we would go to St. Petersburg, Clearwater, but mainly that section, you know, of Tampa. Wesley Chapel? Wesley Chapel, yeah, yes. Lutz, mm -hmm. um, you know, just that particular area. Uh, because you have to pretty much you know, designate an area, sure. you can't go all over. Now, Orlando area, because we were from Davenport, we do a lot in Davenport area, Champions Gate, um, we've got Claremont, we've got Haines City. Oh, that's fabulous. Um, you know, we've got the Disney area um, and Windermere area. So there, there's a wide area over there too, but it pretty much encompasses around Disney World. And mostly residential. Yes. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. very good. Yeah. So, wow, gosh, I could sit and talk to you all day. We only have a minute left. When did you join the chamber, Upper Tampa Bay? We joined the chamber in November of last year, and I actually got a tip from a title company that uh, gave me the idea to join because I was looking for a title company that we could use over in this area when we do start selling more here. And she said, you've got to join the chamber because they're so active and they, yeah. will, they will do so much for you and they will market for you. And she said, that's the number one thing you need to get involved in because I said, you know, we're not known. So uh, it, 
it's perfect. A perfect it, fit. It's been yeah. great. It's been wonderful. Good. Mm -hmm. Well, that's so good to know. I believe in the chambers, too. I've learned so much. At Upper Tampa Bay is just one big happy family. They're very there. active. They're yes. very assertive in yes. helping to promote you, and that's the other great thing. Well, yeah. good luck on your venture now, here. Now, you didn't mm -hmm. say what you were going to say. And Which we only is? have 14 you seconds. You sleep with the boss. Oh, well, I do sleep with the boss. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. We had to get that one in. Too much information. Yeah, <laughs> we uh, want to thank you yeah. for that. <laughs> we'll end on a little comical note. Okay. So check these folks out, all right? Yes. And we'll be right back after this. Hi everyone, welcome back into My Chamber TV. We're the heartbeat of the Tampa Bay community. I'm your host, Barbara Marville Kelly. Thank you so much for joining us. Today we're featuring the Upper Tampa Bay Chamber of Commerce. We are bringing businesses to you so that you can see what's happening in our community. And there's a whole lot of business going on here. We have been opening up. Things are really shaking and moving on here. And my next guest happens to be Daryl Stidham with I insure. Do I love that name? Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So tell us all about your insurance. You do mainly, uh, you're not doing health insurance. Don't do health. I, I dabble a little bit in life. My primary focus is auto, home, and small business, right? Perfect. So that's, that's what we do. Perfect. And what is your tagline? Uh, life happens, I will insure you. <laughs> I think that's so or cool. I will protect you. I, I messed up my own tagline. It's okay. It's a, we're just on live TV. It's no big no deal. No big deal. It's all right. <laughs> so let's talk about one of the most important things that everyone is concerned about. Uh, we were just talking about real estate. You know the boom, the craziness that's going on in there. But the real craziness can be in homeowners insurance. I know that could sound like a, a bad word to us from time to time, but if you're with the right company, it doesn't need to be that way. Is yeah, that correct? That's correct. Uh, home insurance afford is very, very hard right now. Um, and so making sure you have the right company, the right agent that's gonna put you with that right company makes all the difference in the world. Um, so I can tell you this, if your roof is over 10 years old, you may wanna go ahead and start getting quotes to get that roof replaced. Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for saying um, that because that is one big thing. Uh, when you're thinking about buying or selling and all of that, there's a lot of things that you, as the insurer for people with homeowners, is you can give those tips out right now because people don't know no. what they're going to be doing. No, they so don't. they might as well be like a Boy Scout and be prepared. Yeah, it's also the way the market is right now, especially with the real estate and everything else. If you're looking at a home and the roof is 15 years or older, you need to not pay, pay full price for it unless they're going to replace that roof for you because otherwise you're looking at more expensive insurance rates, you're looking at having to replace that roof in three or four years. It's just not worth paying full price if the roof is over 15 years old. Well, and not only that, it, you're at a disadvantage as the seller because the buyer, and if they're working with a real estate agent, they will be using that as a negotiating tool. So you might as well be ahead of the game, right? Right, absolutely, yeah. 100%. Yeah. I mean, it's just, there's a lot that goes into it right now and companies are tightening their restrictions and it's just, it's not a fun place to be. Now let's, let's ho hold up on that. You said the companies are tightening their restrictions, such as the companies that you're working with? Yes. Okay, yes. in what way are they tightening up? I can't think of it being any tighter. Um, so they're, they're shrinking the age of the roof, right? So. Right now, we're seeing 10 years is pretty much being the max. I have one company that won't do a roof over five years old. Really? Really. Um, I just heard that. I'm a licensed realtor. Yeah. Oh, my um, word. We're looking at plumbing. Do you have cast, in an older home, do you have cast iron plumbing? They don't want that. Um, 
there's a lot going on, especially when it comes to coastal distance and things like that. And it used to be coastal distance would, would mandate everything for us. Now we're looking at Orange County, Seminole County, Lake County, and, and Osceola counties not being wide open either because of, of water claims and roof damage and things like that. So exactly. it's just very difficult right now. And right now Citizens is the only uh, oh, carrier no. that go. really is open to taking a lot of different things. Really? We're back to Citizens, huh? Almost. Mm. Almost. Almost. We'll be there by later this year. Wow. Wow. So, um, so what on the positive side is going on in the insurance? <laughs> um, auto rates are pretty stable. Oh, let's talk about. Let's talk about. We were talking about that just before the show. Yeah. Um, and if you know whether you're in good hands with whatever company you're with or not. Right. Uh, and you just came from that company as well. I did. What What can you do for me today on auto insurance? Uh, I can give you a quote and review your coverage. Okay. Um, which is always a great place to start, right? Yes, yes. Um, I, I had a guy come from Geico <coughs> this week who I'm saving $2,000 a year. What? Car insurance, yeah. Saving from where? From Geico. Oh my from goodness. From Geico to another company saving $2,000 a year with better coverage. Um, so just because you call an 800 number does not mean you're going to get the best coverage at the best price. And it's something very important that everybody should know. Mm -hmm. And you're available f for people to physically call you and speak to you on the phone. Yep. Uh, available for phone calls, text, email, Facebook Messenger. I just don't do Instagram or Snapchat because I don't like the way the platform works. Okay. Um, but it's super important for a local agent to be accessible. And that's what I try to be for everybody because, mm -hmm. quite frankly, I've got to compete against 1-800-GEICO or 1-800-PROGRESSIVE. And I need to, need to be that for you yeah that it i think that people are going back to that good old-fashioned you know relationship getting getting back to seeing people talking to them on the phone yeah. because you can understand them better understand otherwise them better, i feel like i have to have multiple conversations and you know just so much documentation and that creates anxiety with people it does so to be able to have you know what you're saying from your lips to my ears that just makes a whole lot of sense so um what would you say to people that I, i'm definitely going to have you you give me a quote for our insurance because yeah. i i <laughs> As a senior citizen, I don't think we're being looked after properly in every insurance company. No. I really don't. And in fact, I actually had an agent tell me that because we are seniors. We're, I don't want to say the D word, but you know what I'm trying to say I, is, is our, our rates are showing. My husband and I have never had an accident, never caused an accident. And right. we're paying through the, through the roof with and, our insurance. And the reason why multiple companies are, like an independent agent like myself, the multiple companies are important is because not every company fits every driver. That's right. And so I can take you and go, okay, I see where you are. I have a company that wants to insure you. Let's put you there. And then you're going to get the best rate. You're going to get the best coverage. You're going to get the best service from that carrier as well as service from me. And that's how an independent agent is supposed to work. That's how that local service, that expert service is supposed to work. Right. And right. Um, I think people have gotten away from that. They're coming back to it now. Um, but the local agent really is what's going to work for you, especially in a claim process. You know, if you go through Geico Direct, they're only looking out for themselves. If you have an agent, not only do I have to represent you, I have to represent the carrier. And so when the carrier does something bad, now I can turn around and fight for you. See, I, I like the way that handles the ones that we've been with for many, 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 many years. What I'm told is, well, that's the way it is today, Mrs. Marvel that's Kelly. That's not the way it is. And, no. I, and, and you know what? I just don't have the patience for it because I'm way too busy out there when I'm supposed to be retired, which will never happen. So I do this to try to raise the awareness on what's happening in the community. Upper Tampa Bay brings great guests and business owners like yourself to, to let people know what's happening today. And if you weren't watching the show, you may not know. Right? No. Even I, as a licensed real estate associate, did not know some of the things that's happening because things are changing on a regular basis. And so um, back to the homeowner's insurance, if you're thinking of selling your home, you really need to take a look and see what the criteria is today. And, and if I understand you correctly, you're saying that some will only, five years is the max? There's a couple of companies out there now that will do five years max. Most are between 10 and 15. Yeah. Once you get over 15 years on a roof, you're looking at citizens. Mm -hmm. um, and that's dependent upon some inspection stuff we have to look at too. Sure. So it's very, very difficult. So what are some of the other things that you could share with homeowners and, ho and buyers from uh, a homeowner's uh, 
perspection. So you're looking at roof age, that's the primary thing. And now you're also gonna go ahead and take a look at, do they have hurricane windows and doors? Okay. Uh, that can provide discounts. Now keep in mind, if not every window and door is hurricane rated, you don't get the full discount or okay. any discount at all, depending on the carrier. Okay. So those are super important things. Um, you know, what are the hazards? Is there a trampoline in the backyard? You need to remove that. Um, if you, I know people have dogs. I have six <coughs> myself. So many dogs. Oh, you're my kind of guy. Yeah, right? Um, if you have a pit bull mix. Oh, yes. Don't, what's it mixed with? Is it a lab mix? Is it a chihuahua mix? Lead with that. It's going to help you in the long run because insurance companies won't insure a pit bull and they, they'll outright deny you yeah. um, coverage if you have a pit bull on the property. That I know um, for sure. And you know what? Nothing against some of you pit, pit bull lovers. I, I know I have friends that have darling, wonderful pit bulls, unfortunately. Yeah, but <sighs> what you know, can I say? But roof age right now is the most important you know, claims. Do you have any claims on your record? Um, those are super, super important as well because they can affect where we can place you. So how far back? On the claims? Uh, five years. Oh, really? Five years? Five years. Well, that's not too bad, because I've heard some, like, two and three. Yeah, some are two and three, but five years back okay. um, on the homeowners. And even if, even if you're buying a new property, mm -hmm. and you haven't had a claim on that property, they'll still pull the claim, and they can still not insure you. You know, I just, there's so much about homeowners insurance I just don't get. It's all we awful. have, the, I know. It's I, all awful. You, you hit, now, here's an, here is, you have your own business and you're saying the same thing <clears throat> as a homeowner because you, you pay through the nose in most cases to uh, have your home protected with insurance, then you make a claim and then it's all against you. Yep. I don't get that. Somebody needs to step in there and make it way better. Well, there's, there's a Senate bill in the Florida legislature this year called Senate Bill 76 that's trying to address that. Oh, well, we're going to close this on that note. And you've been with the chamber for how long, my friend? Uh, about six months. How's it working? I love it. Good. Every part of it. Well, thank you for joining us. And I hope that you will get a hold of this gentleman and uh, check out I Insure. I just love the name of it. And you, you really have good energy. So good luck with this. I thank know it's so working. Much. Okay. Thank you. We'll be right back. Hi everyone, welcome back into My Chamber TV with a heartbeat of the Tampa Bay community. I'm your host, Barbara Marville Kelly. Thank you so much for joining us. We are featuring the Upper Tampa Bay Chamber of Commerce. And my next two guests are going to give us a little bit of law review here on why it's so important to have a representative, especially if you are injured. We happen to have Christy Sullivan and we have Stephanie Ritt with McFarland Gould Law, both attorneys. I love interviewing attorneys because I, I feel like I can get some up-to-date what's what's going on out there and what to be on the lookout for. So Yeah, definitely. As far as injury, um, what, what's your experience with that? I mean, it's really important to have a representative, a legal representative for someone, if especially if you're in like a car accident or injured in some way. Can we talk about that? Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, actually, I was a defense attorney for about 20 years and I worked for a lot of insurance companies. So I have firsthand knowledge of what the insurance companies do um, when someone makes a claim or a lawsuit when they're in an auto accident. 
uh, and they're not looking out for your best interest. Let's put it that way. Uh, they're, you know, they're trying to look at their bottom line and, and save money. So it's very important to have a lawyer so you have someone looking out for your interests. Um, but it's also important to note that not all attorneys are created equal. You have to look at the experience of the attorney. It's very important. Oh yes. Um, I'm a board certified civil trial attorney and only 1% of the about 93,000 members of the Florida Bar are board certified and even less of those are women. That's similar to a board certified physician. Yes, yes. So you're like the real deal. Yes, Not I had, I had yeah. to try um, numerous cases by myself, uh, many as lead. You have to take kind of a, almost a mini bar exam, another test on trial evidence, and then you have to get numerous recommendations from um, attorneys and judges to get board certified. So you really want to get a lawyer to assist you and one that, that's experienced. Mm -hmm. Very good. So you two work as a team? Yes, we do. So there are a number of attorneys with our firm. Uh, our law firm, McFarland Gould Law, has been around in the Tampa Bay area for over 75 years now. Nice. Uh, so with the attorneys associated with our firm, we have a combined legal experience of over 200 years. Uh, Stephanie and I, as well as our managing partner, Chuck Sullivan, work in the personal injury department. And so we are the attorneys handling your case when you're injured, whether it's an auto accident, a slip and fall, or any other type of serious injury, wrongful death, whatever it may be, experience really matters, as Stephanie said. It does, and that is common sense, but sometimes people just don't want to be bothered or maybe they don't think they're injured enough. Um, I have personal experience with that, and I did have a very good attorney. It's probably well over 20 years. But let's talk about the the unsuspecting person that may figure they'll never be in a car accident or ever be injured or wrongful death or anything like that. With the amount of experience that you have, what is the first thing we should not do? What's the first thing we should do it, when that happens? Yeah, when you're involved in any type of injury situation, the most important thing to do is to get an attorney involved right away uh, because you need to focus on getting better. Mm -hmm. You know, you're in pain, you're dealing with a, a traumatic event that you've been involved in, and you need someone on your side to fight for you so that you can focus on getting better and healing, whether it's, you know, individually or dealing with a family situation so that we can take that weight off your shoulders and make sure that your interests are being protected and that when you get an attorney involved from the get-go, you aren't dealing with a situation where you attempt to handle it on your own and sometimes you just make it worse for yourself. Sure. Uh, so let us handle that part of it so that you can focus on what's really important, which is your family and your health. You know, that is really good advice. Um, to, to know what to do and what not to do, and whatever you do, don't sign a single thing yeah. anywhere from anybody until you get representation, right? Yeah, and a lot of people uh, who have tried to handle it on their own, um, the insurance company will take what's called a recorded statement um, on the phone, and we, we like to get involved maybe before that occurs, sure. yeah. so we could uh, even be present for it or give someone advice prior to. It's often you know not good, we'll, we do, sometimes try to help them as best we can, but if we get it after the fact and then we have this statement, they've already admitted to certain things, mm -hmm. done certain things right. um, that they didn't know, so it really, the sooner you can get the attorney involved, the better. I, I, I so agree with you guys. Um, the, the thing is, is that if you're in an accident and you're trying to heal, you you're, may not be thinking clearly, you yeah. may be saying something that isn't true, you didn't intend to do that, right. but to have representation Especially because I know when I, I was rear-ended many years ago, it was like I blacked out and everything. And so I, I can relate to that trauma that happens to us and we don't know what's going on in our head, our right. back, or whatever. So, and I, I actually had just a, a light conversation with somebody um, on an elevator one day and I was talking about, we were talking about car accidents and she was suffering mm -hmm. and she says, if you ever get in a car accident, don't ever sign anything. <laughs> Find yourself a really good attorney. And you know, that's, I don't even know who the person was, you know, a perfect stranger. But if you kind of think of these things that make sense, it really does. What else should we know? Well, certainly another reason to get an attorney involved right away is you have to get medical treatment within 
uh, 14 days of the accident. Uh -huh. um, this, uh, I don't want to give a lot of talk about insurance necessarily, but there's a portion of insurance called PIP, personal injury protection, yes. and you cannot get that coverage unless you've gotten that medical uh, treatment within the 14 days. Okay. And we've gotten cases, people after that 14 days, and they've gotten no medical treatment, and then they can't, there's really nothing we can do on that particular issue then because they've, they can't get that coverage. And sometimes that is very beneficial coverage mm -hmm. for the person to get, they can't get. So again, you've got to get that attorney right away so we can guide you and, and when you need to get your treatment, the time frames, um, you know, guide you to the doctors that can help you um, and kind of guide you through the insurance process. That yeah, makes sense. we also help with the property damage side uh, of things too. Okay. You know, a lot of time people who are involved, if it's, it's a minor accident, the pain and the injury might not necessarily set in for a couple days That's because true. you're you're involved in a trauma, your adrenaline rushes, and sometimes it takes a couple days for that to really wear off sure. and you to realize that you're injured. Yeah. So sometimes people come to us and their first concern is the property damage. Mm -hmm. And not every personal injury attorney assists with the property damage case, uh, but we do for free. So, you know, when you're in an accident, you if you're you know, concerned about your vehicle, we'll assist you with that part as well. Make oh, sure that you're, you're getting the best value and that you're not being taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. um, so we do provide that as a complimentary service as well as helping you through the injury process because it, it, it can be a very difficult process if, if you don't handle it every day like we do. That is really helpful, especially if somebody's injured really bad. Yes. And has a whole lot of healing Absolutely. to do. My goodness, yeah. Well, this is really, I, I'm always learning when I interview attorneys and especially when you have the specialty and to have 75 years of uh, law experience with the, um, the, lawyer, the group that you guys are with. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been with them? I've been with them for about six years now. Yeah? Yes. Very good. And I just have to ask, you've got some history a little bit longer. And did you have this, growing up, did you, did, were you a debater? Did yeah. you? <laughs> I'm just curious. Well, I have a little bit of an interesting background. I was actually um, a dancer and um, uh, actress in New York City for a number of years before I went to law school. Wow. Uh, and then I actually went into law um, with the idea of going into enter entertainment law oh. originally. Oh, okay. Um, but then I loved, like maybe it was the acting side of me, I ended up loving being in the courtroom, the trials, um, which led me into doing more, because a, a lot of entertainment laws are more transactional. So I got more into doing a lot more of the, the uh, personal injury side of it, where I got to do a lot of trial work. Um, and there actually is, you know, a little bit of that kind of uh, entertainment side in some trials, because you oh, do yeah. have to make it yeah. interesting. Oh, yeah. And, and you tell a story. Right. Convincing. You're a storyteller, yeah. and you're telling you really a, a story, you know, mm -hmm. to educating mm -hmm. the jury and telling a story. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of how I fell into it. Um, and I, uh, like I said, I, I was a defense lawyer for about 20 years. Um, I've been at McFarland Gould for about three years, but I've worked in Tampa for over 20 years, um, mainly on the defense side of personal injury cases. Mm. So I kind of know the other side, so to speak. That's good, though, yeah. because you're very well-rounded. Yeah. My goodness, we're running out of time already. How long have you been with Upper Tampa Bay? Oh, well, our firm has been with the Upper Tampa Bay for about 20 years, uh -huh. um, and um, I love it. I, I'm, I think... Um, Part of what I like is it's such a diverse group. Mm -hmm. There's so many different professions. You meet so many different people and learn from them. And also, I think the Upper Tampa Bay Chamber really seems to have a, a concern for all its members to succeed. Yes, I mean, they, they really uh, have all sorts of educational opportunities, um, all sorts of seminars, and all sorts of ways mm -hmm. to learn um, to really help you better your business for all the members, which I really like. Oh yeah, they they definitely are all about, and that's one reason why they participate with My Chamber TV, so that we can get information out there. I'm sure you've all learned something here in just, in all these segments that we do with My Chamber TV. So I want to thank you so much. I would love to get your card. I like to uh, keep cards close to my heart with people Absolutely. that is very compelling and very interesting, especially when it comes to law. We need all the help we can get. Thank you, ladies. Thank, well, thank you. you. Thank you. We'll be right back.
Hi everyone, welcome back into My Chamber TV. We're the heartbeat of the Tampa Bay community and we're featuring the Upper Tampa Bay Chamber of Commerce. We just happen to be very lucky to have Doug Beavis, who is the Director of Business and Government Affairs with us. Hey, how did we get so lucky today? I'm not even sure exactly what that means, but oh. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're speaking like no, I didn't want to say a politician. Yeah, 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 like a politician. <laughs> well, you were former mayor, right? I was a mayor from 2013 till 2019, and I joke with the current mayor all the time about, because I got out right about the time the pandemic started, so I like to, you know, say I'm glad you're mayor now and not me. So, yeah. Well, you've had a lot of experience and all, and you've been with the chamber for how long? I've been with the chamber about a year, but I've done things with the chamber either as a mayor or I obviously did radio for 30 years. Oh, so, that's right, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. with uh, US 103.5, and so um, I've always done stuff with the chamber, um, probably 25 years. Mm, Very good. Yeah, all the way back to when Russell Rhodes was out doing the Charlie Belcher stuff. Oh so, my goodness, yeah, that's so. a long time. Well, you know, I'm, I just, I love Oldsmar. Yeah. In fact, my son's living in Oldsmar now. They bought a Where's house he? over nice. here in East Lake Woodlands. And it, there's just a- that, We call that the wannabe Oldsmar. Because the wannabe they, Oldsmar? Well, because that's the zip code of Oldsmar, but technically they're not in the city limits. So. Oh, oh, I always thought it was Palm Harbor. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, we, we found him his home there, and I should know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, so what's happening? What can be happening in Oldsmar now? What is opening up? Well, I'll tell you, and we tell our chamber members this a lot, that um, the Upper Tampa Bay Chamber of Commerce has really never skipped a beat when it came to the pandemic. Um, we kind of uh, pivoted and repositioned ourselves, mm -hmm. but we still continued to do events. We did them differently. We started with Zooms like everybody else, but we really uh, tried to maintain uh, membership interaction and, and education through our economic development programs and our social programs that we had. We kind of did them a different way. But we're finally, uh, for the past six months, we've been out you know, at restaurants and, and meeting different places where you know, social distancing sure. and the masks and all of that kind of stuff. But um, you know, we're probably one of the more active chambers in the area. So, and our chamber members thank us for that. So oh, sure, because I know everyone's anxious to get back out. And we've been doing a lot of shows out and about at some of the restaurants outside right. and inside, just being very careful and just using common sense and all of that. That's the key, I think, is just mm -hmm. common sense. Yeah. You know? And I mean, I think the one thing at least that I've seen that we've learned from the pandemic is that we weren't using common sense. We weren't really great in restaurants and we were in each other's space. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, I think we have a new respect for what's going on when we when we leave this pandemic, if we ever do. So. Oh, I know. I'll tell you, and I commend all you guys down there for pushing forward. And believe it or not, I mean, there has been businesses that have opened and they have been stri striving and uh, thriving, but there was also p businesses that just opened up just before the pandemic and still made it right through. Yeah, I think you're gonna talk to Amanda um, from Delta Fitness here in just a yes. minute, and they, timing-wise, they, you know, as with another uh, gym membership that I personally had a relationship with, getting ready to open right at the beginning of the pandemic when they shut down all the gyms. And, oh, I but, remember that. Oh, gosh. And she had a beautiful place yeah, in her yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. But she's opened up elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. so it's good. So, I mean, I think we're, you know, we're finding the new norm, I guess. I don't really like that word, but, you know, we're finding the new norm. We're hoping uh, to have Oldsmar Days. We normally have the parade and the event in March, which is concerts and a three-day festival. We normally have it in March. We've pushed it back to April 23rd through the 25th, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We've submitted our, uh, I guess you call it a safety plan to the uh, city of Oldsmar, which also follows the county ordinances and then the sheriff enforces them, you know, no more than a thousand people and social distancing. Sure. And, and so we're really trying to do it. This, the struggle I have is we're trying to put together, uh, we started putting together this plan while the Buccaneers were in the playoffs and we're putting together, yes, we're gonna social distance, yes, we're gonna thousand people in masks and we're gonna do this, and then you're watching the television of the, the boat parade um, with the Buccaneers and everybody's all over everybody. And, 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 and so the one key thing that came out of that that I found is that it was determined that it was not a super spreader event. So mm -hmm. I think maybe we've turned the corner on a lot of this. So we hope to have our, our Oldsmar Days and Nights Parade. We hope to have our car show going to be a little bit different um, the way we set up the, the, the facility and we're going to monitor the number of people that come in and out. So 
people, as you said, people are really jonesing uh, to get back out and, oh, yeah. and be smart. Yeah. You're always going to have the numbskull that's going to not social distance and not right. do things, but we hope to, you know, we hope to keep that to a minimum. Right. So I, well, I think people on the average, I mean, for those that have been hunkered down, <laughs> forget about it they are so ready to get out and oh. about and I mean I myself and my husband we've been very careful using our common sense and all so the thing is is that what we miss mostly is that that camaraderie with businesses because it becomes kind of like a business family affair really yeah we had one of our economic development uh, guests that we had recently talked about that and how businesses are you know they're going to zoom things and everything is zoom but for the employee, especially in bigger corporations, you just become a number. There's no water cooler talk. There's no, hey, how's your family? How's your kids? Yeah. How's all that? So when the upper management is looking to cut people, you're just 0926743, boom, yeah. it's yeah. easier to go as opposed to the, the interaction. And I think that's one of the things that, that we're missing. And uh, my brother, who is staying with me for the next week or so, is a victim of that. He was up in Chicago where they're locked down, you know, tighter than a drum. And it was really getting to him uh, mentally, you know, and I oh, think yeah. the mental health part of this is, and so he's moving to St. Pete and wants to be out and, you know, about and, and so, uh, and I think that's the business community too. I think yeah. we've adjusted. Zooms are great. Uh, I was talking to our assistant city manager this morning. She was on four Zoom calls yesterday. You begin to kind of lose consciousness, I think, when you're on them so much that you, mm -hmm. you know, you're not paying attention, you're surfing the internet as opposed to being in a, a controlled meeting. And, and being 100% engaged. Engaged, absolutely. Yeah. And so we're, we're even seeing that um, at the chamber with some of the events that we do. Today we're doing, uh, uh, every Wednesday we do a lunch and learn at the chamber uh, where we have a topic and people come in and you know we provide a little bit of lunch and we, we discuss a topic. But more than just the topic, it's the social interaction, I sure, think, that, sure. that I think we meet. And I think that's healthy. And I, oh, I think it goes yes. back to... It, it is. It goes back to even... Uh, I, I look at homeschooling versus public schooling. Oh, yeah. and, and I remember when my daughter was little and I was at the airport and the lady said, your daughter goes to a daycare, right? And I go, yeah. And she, and she goes, I can tell because of the social interaction that she has where we homeschool. And I think that is in the workforce, too. Mm -hmm. You know, especially with the younger generations. They... They kind of get caught up in a vacuum. Having said that, the mm -hmm. economic development director, the person that we had the other day, um, said that the, 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 what do they call it, post-millennials now are... Withdrawing? We're, we're, they're, but they're liking it. I think the, a six-hour day is the new, uh, uh, the eight-hour day is now a new six-hour day because they can get their work done more efficiently. And still have time to play. And still have time. That's exactly what the guy said. He said they like to come in, maybe get to work at six, work for about, three or four hours, and this guy he was talking about was up in Jacksonville. He would go surf for a couple of hours, and then he would come back and finish the day. Mm -hmm. You know, they kind of are refresh. doing refresh. And we were talking about um, the corporate world and how, uh, you know, I, I changed companies three times but never moved my desk because of being ac acquired in the engineering field. That's not the way they are, the young, you know, post-millennials are. They, they want... Um, they want to work somewhere for about 12 months to 18 months. Mm -hmm. Then they want to jump to another company I've and, heard and that. advance, you know, 10, 15 percent in salary. Stay there for 18 months and then jump and jump and jump. And mm -hmm. so, uh, it's becoming tough for employers, especially at the government level. Yeah, yeah, so, I can I can imagine that. Well, everybody is to find their way, and yeah. especially in the in the middle of this pandemic, um, you find a lot of about yourself too yeah, when yeah. you're stuck at home and uh, this, this and that. But my husband and I have always done business at home with the exception of real estate. But even that, well, you know, real estate is yeah, crazy, 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 crazy yeah. times right now. But we're all surviving. And I, I tell you, these businesses that we interview, I am so proud of these businesses in my own backyard that have thrived and just keep pushing forward. And there's b new businesses opening up all the time. So if you live in Osmar or if you're going through some tough times, you may want to think about joining the chamber because I'll tell you what, you will definitely get connected. And, it's, it's not about it, paying your fees and then expecting something to happen. Engage yourself, right? And it's there. That's what we always tell about. It takes two. It's there for you if yeah. you want to do it, but mm -hmm. it does require some effort. You oh, know, we're sure. not going to come to your house and pick you up, but there we have plenty of opportunities. We have a golf tournament coming up March 19th at Tarpon Woods. 
It's Palm Harbor against the uh, Upper Tampa Bay Chamber in two-man scrambles. You know, big trophy to be there. Um, like I said, the lunch and learns. We also got relationship builders every Friday. So there's plenty of opportunities, as you said, for businesses um, to interact with each other. Sure. We don't even know who our neighbors are sometimes in the business community. So Isn't that the truth? Yeah. I, I mean, I've learned more about the community doing the chamber shows. And I've lived in Tarpon Springs now for 23 years, right up the street. Yeah. And But going in all these different directions and meeting new people and businesses, we have a couple more seconds left. Anything else you want to mention? We always say that. We always say that. <laughs> I never realized that was right here in my own backyard. I know. And it's our own businesses. So it is. It, it's been great. It and, is. And if you want to join the chamber, utbchamber.com. And we'd be glad to help you and, and get you started. And it works, definitely. It's good match. We'll be right back. Hi everyone, welcome back into my Chamber TV, the heartbeat of the Tampa Bay community. I am so excited, I feel really at home at one of the best kept secrets. If you wanna feel good, look good, and do the very best you can in spite of the pandemic, you need to come to Delta Life Center. We happen to have our owner, Amanda, uh, Babonis. Amanda Babonis. Okay, yes. and you are the owner and area developer, and we're going to get into that along with Jessica Tinsley, who's trainer, coach, and sales associate. And my dear, you gave me such a wonderful welcoming <laughs> and a presentation here, a tour. I'm so impressed. I, and it takes a lot to impress me. But <laughs> well, this you. is for women, and the age group is thereabouts, where, from, and to. So we are built for women. Everything um, in this center is going to be uh, really developed for the female metabolism, um, the, the you know body positivity, everything. Um, age group is anywhere from teenagers, because we actually have a young women's apartment program that I haven't spoke with you about. So it's oh. all the way from teenage all the way up to our oldest members are around 83 years old. So average age is going to be 58 in our center. I love that. So how young is young for the teenagers? 14, so they're all high school age. And we actually Perfect. sponsor them, so they will get six months um, for free if they're part of our Young Women's Department program, um, where they can come in, work out with their mom or their grandmother, um, and really build that relationship, uh, as well as learn about health at an early age. I, I just haven't heard, I, am I living under a rock or what here? <laughs> you have the best kept secret, you really do. I, as soon as I walked in, I felt the energy from you guys, and uh, seeing the facility here, what's the square footage? It's 3,750 square feet. Um, we're actually the largest Delta Life Fitness in the U.S. Um, to date, and our workout space alone is 2,200 square feet. Um, so we can definitely fit, um, we can fit up to 32 people in here, but we have uh, knocked the numbers down to be able to, to fit 20. A lot of our classes are even only five, six people. So we make sure everybody is spaced out and, and can get a good workout and a comfortable square footage. See, I would feel really comfortable here. We, we had to leave our, our gym which was um, men, women, mm -hmm. and it was much, much smaller. I mean, I don't know what they've done since, and I missed it because it was a, you know, it was a good gym, clean, always clean. But I like it here because you do have, it, it's just an expansive area to work out in, and it is for women. I, I did, I used to belong to, I think I told you that I did belong to a, a women's fitness club many, many years ago, and they've, you know, gone to the wayside so I'm seriously interested in myself um, your your cost is also very affordable and we really don't get into that here on our segment but I wanted to mention that because I'm seriously looking at the, joining myself because it's like 10 minutes <laughs> up the road here so let's talk about um, the activities and the training because you have TVs all over in here mm -hmm. which I love I think that's so great I feel like I've had a workout just watching this. <laughs> yeah, so um, one of the great things about our facility is that we do have all of our exercises up on the TV screens. So, of course, the trainers are here. I myself am a trainer, and we do demonstrate each of the moves, but um, 
once we're done demonstrating, uh, you're able to take a look at those TV screens and we, each TV screen has a starter move, a base move, and an advanced move. So we really try to um, make sure that we are incorporating something for every member who wants to be a part of uh, our facility. And our workouts are all HIT style as well, so that is high intensity interval training. So we definitely get up into the higher heart rate zones and um, try to knock them back right back down because that will increase uh, the women's metabolism as well. And that's kind of our goal here is to be the best that we can be for every woman. And so that is why we choose to do those HIIT workouts. And you know, um, I just wanted to hang there for a split second on the boosting the metabolism, because if you're like moi, you may have a little extra COVID six or seven or maybe 10 pack, okay? <laughs> so just so you understand, if you're not into health and fitness uh, and haven't been, now's the time to really think about it, especially if you live in this area, I think it's so fabulous what you have to offer here. Um, the equipment, everything, and this is all brand new. Brand new, which I also love. Yeah, we actually just opened to the public on September 1st, and um, you know that you, you touched on square footage earlier, and that's something that when we signed this lease um, and took, took hold of it in February, right before everything happened, um, we didn't realize that, that everything was gonna be shut down. We didn't realize mm -hmm. that we were gonna need more square footage, so it kind of worked in our favor. Um, and for, for us, if you don't mind, I would love to touch on the, on the COVID uh, protocols and Please stuff. Please do, that we because here. that's very important. Yeah, so we actually, like I said, we, we didn't even realize it was gonna happen, but it kind of worked out in our favor. We have a huge workout space, so everybody is distanced. But from the second you step in our door, we have a mat. I don't know if you noticed that you step on, it actually sanitizes and cleans the bottom of your shoes. Really? Yep, so that we don't track stuff throughout the workout space, because we do have a kid's corner. You know, we, we have kids that are on the floor as well as um, our workout space in here. So we take your temperature, um, everything is one way, so we follow the one-way signs um, throughout the facility. But when you come into our workout space, we have a unit um, hanging on the wall. It's called an Airfix. Um, Airfix is an air and sanitizing, uh, surface sanitizing um, technology that they use in hospitals. It literally puts small amounts of hydrogen peroxide throughout the air. It's constantly cleaning the ambient air and the surfaces 24 hours a day on top of us cleaning, obviously, constantly all throughout the day. Um, and we've really just made sure to, to, to step up our protocols to make sure that everybody feels comfortable. I, where's my contracts? <laughs> Show me where no to contracts. sign. We don't have oh, contracts. Oh, no contracts. Oh, that was a perfect segue <laughs> into that, right? <laughs> well, I can't find anything wrong here. Seriously, I can't. I mean, this is beautiful. Um, talk about the hours, okay, and uh, when you're open and how that works as well. Yeah, so um, we do open as early as 5 a.m. We have a 5.15 class and a 6.15 class a.m. Um, every single, every day. And then... Right now we're, we're closing for that little mid-morning moment and then we, we really open up to the public um, for people to walk in and come see us at 8 a.m. And so 8 a.m. until through the end of our last class of the day, which is uh, dependent upon the day between 6.30 and 7.15. So we're usually open, we're usually here and open until about 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. on some days. Oh yeah, we get class times early in the morning. We have lunchtime classes mm -hmm. and we have evening classes on Saturdays as well. So you have something for everyone, those yes. that are working, those that are retired, yeah. those are that are really committed to exercise, health, wellness, and all of that. If they're if you're an early workout gal, that's when I perform the best. And uh, I think it's really fabulous. I'm gonna come in and by the way, what's happening this week? Uh, yes, so uh, we, we do like to incorporate our specialty classes as well. Uh, I myself lead a deep stretch class is what we like to call it. So this Friday, well this week we're doing spirit week. And so this Friday we're doing a deep stretch for our spirit week. Uh, it's going to be PJ day. So that's our theme for the day for our spirit week. And um, that's at 9.15 in the morning. Um, but with our spirit week, what we really try to do is get everyone, all of our members to um, encourage each other and get involved because that's really the big part of Delta Life Fitness is that we want everyone to feel comfortable and confident within their community so we're really a community we're not just a gym and that's kind of what we would like to I, I love that it's just it's the concept of the now it really is you know living in the now work out in the now and uh, Delta means Delta means change ah. right so whenever I first heard the franchise Delta Life Fitness I was I was I couldn't understand what it meant I'm like what does Delta mean I think of an airline personally some people think of a sorority right right, right. so um, looking into it a little bit more I understood that Delta actually means change so as, as you come in here and you change and you evolve it's not just physically but it's emotionally it's building friendships and community um, and it really is changing your life it changed my life coming from um, big box gyms the big fitness centers 
Um, actually seeing that compared to this and what this has to offer, um, I was postpartum whenever I um, bought into the franchise. And for me, I didn't feel comfortable going back into the big gym. I felt comfortable here and it really did change the way that I felt about myself. And where I am now compared to where I want to be was, was a, big, a big difference um, in really living in the now and, and learning to appreciate yourself and your community. So, Did it take some anxiety away oh, from so the dead. big... The, look, at, look at this. <laughs> look at this beautiful 5, girl's 000. face. Ah. Yes. 5,000 members going down to this, and, and it's a small community. We don't need 5,000 members here, you know? No, you we don't. We want to be able to give, you know, customer service and, and really know everybody by name and um, know about their family and how they're doing and, and, you know, handwritten cards and, you know, making those phone calls. We really want to be able to have um, that community here. Oh, that's so exciting. And your core value? So we have quite a few core values, but um, my favorite core value is, is going to be, um, you know, enjoying where you are while working towards where you want to be. Very good, very good. Well, we just have about a minute and a half remaining. Um, I think I just can't find anything that you're lacking here. <laughs> I am so excited to be here and to really share what's going on with you. And you know, we this COVID has just been really a pain in the neck. To, I mean, come on. But we can always find something good about it. And I, hey, listen, I'll be the first one to raise my hand. I'm guilty as charged for eating too much of my own comfort food, mm -hmm. and it shows. And I and I'm uncomfortable with it. So. I'm gonna come down here and, and test you guys out and see if you're if you want to put up with me or not. <laughs> well, and you need to check it out as well. We're right here on um, the right off of East Lake Road, or is it? Called? Yeah, it's East Lake Road here East Lake Road. and Tampa Road. And you can come down here and you have complimentary workout to come in and get acquainted. Actually, for the chamber, we're gonna give everybody a free week. So if you come in, you mention the chamber or give us a call, mention the chamber, you're gonna get a free week. A free week? Free week yes. Come on, join me. <laughs> yeah, John's in the back. No, it's women only. <laughs> we do special co ed events the last Saturday of the month. So oh, we're you do? Be, yep, mm -hmm. on March 27th, we're gonna be doing an open house with a co ed class. So. Oh, there you go, John. You go. Now you Absolutely. can come in. Yeah, and it's all heart rate monitored, so we can see the heart rates of the guys compared to the women. Let's see uh, who burned the most calories. Yeah, I bet I know who it's going to be. Uh, <laughs> anyway, thank you so much. You ladies are delightful. Your place is absolutely wonderful. And, you know, there's no time like the present time to be committed and take control of your life. Lead by example. We'll see you again here on My Chamber TV. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much.